just been holding you up So there's nothing I can do to let you down Does it take a trophy to make you cry? I'll never be more loved than I am right now Ooh. Going through a storm, but I won't go down I hear your voice So I wouldn't 
Yeah, thank you. And please ask you to take a seat. We are here to remember and to celebrate the life of Craig Thompson Stewart. Craig was taken to be with the Lord on Wednesday, the 21st of April. I'd like to welcome you here on behalf of Craig's family, his immediate family and his extended family. Firstly, wife Julie, their four children, Nadia, Riley, Jordan and Addison. And also on Craig's side of the family, I'd like to welcome you here on behalf of Craig's father, Ken. And also remember Craig's late mother, Deborah, his late sister, Nicole. I'd like to welcome you here also on behalf of Craig's sister, Elizabeth, and his brothers and their wives, Chris and Emma, Tim and Shaya. If you're joining us online, I'd like to welcome you as well. Also, for Craig, on Craig's in-law side, on Julie's side of the family, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Craig's parents-in-law, Gary and Kerry Armstrong, his brothers and sisters-in-law, Cherie and Jason, Michael and Linda, Joanne and Troy, Lorinda and Shane, Angela and Caleb, and the 25 nieces and nephews that round out the prolific clan. My name is Pastor Dave Peroz, and uh, I'm pastor at Connect Baptist Church at Deegan, and I've had the privilege of knowing Craig for some seven to eight years. Uh, Craig was more than just a pastor and a leader to me. I had the privilege of being called one of his mentors, but really the greatest privilege was really just being known as one of his friends. For all of us, we're here because Craig was special in our lives, whether it's as a family member, a friend, a leader, uh, maybe it was because he was a ministry colleague or you saw him and as part of your church congregation as a, as a leader and a contributor in worship. However you saw Craig or how, whoever he was in your life today, we just want to remember the joy that he brought to our lives for the person that he was. But we also want to remember that Losing him brings grief. But there is joy because of the faith that he had in Jesus. Craig was more than just a Christian leader. Firstly, he was a child of the king. And so we want to remember that today, that he has been reunited with those who have gone before him. And if you know Jesus, you too will be reunited with him at some stage as well. I know that you coming today means a lot to the family. It means a lot whether you're here in person, whether you're watching online, whether you've contributed in any way. I know that they really appreciate that and your presence with us today is just really greatly appreciated. I'm going to invite Pastor Jerry Fruin to come and share with us Psalm 91, which was a passage that was on Craig's heart in the weeks, later weeks of his life. Thanks, Jerry. morning all. I've known Pastor Greg for about three years and um, we became good friends and I believe he served God with all his heart, his soul, his mind and his strength. I believe he served the Lord greatly and he's going to be greatly in this. And uh, he gets to know some of the Psalm 1 words. And he's my uso. And I say it today. Psalm 91. And our T version. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge. He alone is my place of safety. He is my God. And I trust in him. For he will rescue me from every trap 
He will protect you from deadly diseases. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid. The terror of the night nor the arrows that flies in the day. Do not dread the diseases that stalks in darkness, none them, the disasters that strikes at midday, though a thousand falls at your sight, ten thousands are dying around you. This evil will not touch you. Let me say it again. This evil will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. And if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Lord the most high God, your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plagues will come near your home, for he will order the angels, angels to protect wherever you go. He will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt the fruit on the stone. He will trample with lions and cobras. He will crush fierce lions, serpents under your feet. And the Lord says, I will rescue you. I will rescue you. I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in his name. When they call on me, and when you call on him, I will answer, says the Lord. I will be with you in trouble. I will rescue you and honor you. I will reward you with a long life and give you my salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. Can I invite um, Shane Stiles, uh, Craig's brother-in-law, just to come and share about Craig's love of music. Thanks, Shane. Just ask the team to come as well. Wow, Stewie, look at this, look at this, what an impact one life can make. If you know Stewie, and I'm sure you all do in, in your own way, you'll know his love and his passion for, for worship and music. Craig, I stole a bit of Craig's words, what he talked about himself. Craig is an enthousi enthusiastic and passionate communicator with a heart to see everyone experience the powerful presence of God through worship. He was committed to inspire others and con continually move forward in their own worship journey and pursue the radical expression of praise and worship that is the overflow life transformed by a magnificent God. That's Craig's words, not mine. That's what Craig's heart was as a man. That's what Craig's heart was as a worshiper. The Saturday just before... Uh, he went to the hospital for the last time. I've been, I've been down for a few days visiting Craig and trying to be a, a good friend and brother-in-law. I said, Craig, why don't you go and have a bit of a rest, um, have a nana nap? And uh, so he did. He went and had a, a nap. And um, a couple of hours later, he resurfaced. And I said, mate, how'd you go? Did you have a good rest? He said, mate, I didn't sleep at all. I said, you didn't sleep at all, mate? He goes, no, no, but I had a great time in the presence of God. And he said... I've just um, I got to write a whole bunch of stuff and actually wrote three songs. And if you know Craig, he's, he's always writing songs. And uh, I just thought it was very apt today to read one of those songs that he wrote. This was one of the last songs that he wrote before he went to the hospital the following day. He calls this one, Goodness. Who can fathom your goodness? Who can measure the riches, measure the riches of your grace? Nothing can compare. Nothing can compare. What can resist your favour or try to hold your blessing? Nothing can compare. Nothing can compare. You alone are God. 
most holy in every way. I'm overwhelmed by your goodness. I cannot contain your goodness. I have to praise your goodness. It's pouring out in me. I can't explain your goodness. It wraps me up in fullness. I'll show the world your goodness. It's your love pouring out of me. And how, how much do you know he did that? Everywhere he went and continued to worship God. His love poured out. I believe. I receive. I'm held in your goodness. There is nothing more I can do. By your grace, I receive all that you have for me. Powerful words. Powerful words. Craig never stopped praising God right till his last, last breath. And I, I love that about him, and I'll always love that about him. But any sort of uh, event that Craig would have arranged, we cannot have without a bit of praise and worship. And there's no greater people that he loved to lead us in worship today than his wife, Julie, um, his sister-in-laws that sung with him, Lorinda and Ange. And Murray's been a, a great friend of Craig for so long and supported him so much through the Sandgate days. So it's, it's very apt to have him here today as well. So let's... Uh, Hand it over to Julie. Just look up, help us on the way. Turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full, look full in His wonderful The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. The Savior has come with the morning light. The cross has the final word. 
take a minute to look to you, Jesus, because we know this wasn't our plan, but we know that you've got us, Lord. We turn our eyes to you, Lord Jesus. Turn, turn your eyes. Just as part of Craig's eulogy this morning, we are going to hear from a number of groups. We're going to hear firstly from Ken and Craig's side of the family, and then later in the marriage years, we're going to hear from Julie's side of the family, and then some input from Julie and the kids as well. So could I invite those who are giving the eulogy, part of the eulogy, just to come up, please? Firstly, I want to start by acknowledging the vast group of relatives, friends and associates of Craig who have gathered this morning to pay their respects and to honour him. For our families, it is most comforting and very supportive. Thank you all. Today, before you, I, st um, I with a stand with a breaking heart. It is a difficult task to do. We as Craig's family want to honour him as best we can in this short part of his 42 years on this earth. I also represent his late mother, Deborah, today. Craig Thompson Stewart was born on a cool Toowoomba morning at 7 a.m., 28th of September, 1977. Craig was the second son our second child born to myself and Deborah 
after the loss of our first child, Nicole, and is the older sibling to Elizabeth, Christopher and Timothy. Right from the beginning, Craig was delightful and a, a pretty clever cookie. He brought joy to everyone with a cheeky grin and a loving heart. There was always a maturity and responsibility about him. He was good company. He was smart and had an intellect that was always working on his next big idea. Anything was possible. I remember finding him as a young child when buses turned up to see our prize-winning Carnival Garden in Toowoomba. He quickly worked out that if he stood on the footpath as the buses arrived and stood at the door of each bus, he would uh, receive loads and handfuls of lollies from the people as they got off the bus. His pockets were filled over many times, and I think his mouth. <laughs> Craig loved playing with his toys and Lego bricks. Many hours were spent riding his BMX bike, racing cars on the Scar Electrics track, wrestling with his brothers, and surfing the waves on our family beach holidays. School holidays were spent with both his grandparents in Brisbane, and what a treat it was to spend time with his auntie Joanne, ten pin bowling, and the epic treat of going to a real professional basketball game. In his teenage years, Craig loved sport. He was an avid cricket follower, cheering on Australia at the Gabba, a, a keen basketball, spending many hours perfecting his dribbling and the slam dunk. Seems um, he liked to dribble, I used to wipe it up all the time. <laughs> After high school into adult years, he enjoyed taking on his brother Chris, playing squash, true mates on and off the squash court. The day Craig received his licence, he was ready to take on the world and loved his independence. The race was on too. The quickest driver home after singing practice that night between me and him was the winner, doing 120k along a street looking for a roundabout. Whoever gave in first got home first. He has also enjoyed spending time with his cousins Paul and Derek, um, revving V8 engines and talking all things Holden cars. Another love of Craig's was watching the latest blockbuster movies and there were many late night movie marathons at the theatre. Top Gun, Maverick, Indiana Jones and Star Wars and probably Star Wars was his most uh, loved at the top of the list. Taking his sister Elizabeth to the movies, sharing their love of storytelling soundtracks and adventure were wonderful moments they shared, having full conversation entirely of movie quotes with Timo would stretch on for days. School came easy to Craig. He attended Gavin Bar Primary School and loved every minute. His caring nature became evident in grade two when Deborah and I were called up to the school for a talk with the teacher. We were informed that Craig could not finish all of his tasks on time. We soon discovered why. Craig would go around in an open class of grades one, two and three and um, to each of his classmates and make sure that they had a sharp pencil, a rubber and a ruler. He always cared for others, even at a young age. Craig attended Centenary Heights State High School and he achieved at a high level. They nicknamed him Dr. Stu. When it came to light, his ambition was to become a medical doctor. Craig often recalled how fo of fond memories of time spent with his mum when he was up studying for exams. She would always make him cups of tea and a piece of bun loaf. 
They enjoyed watching hours of TV shows like The Flying Doctors, his favourite, and ER, his favourite. After high school, Craig went to USQ and completed a, a three-year Bachelor of Nursing degree. Craig was well liked at our house and, um, and our house was an endless procession of friends enjoying movies, swimming in our pool and sleepovers. There were many classic catches and sneaky flips into the pool off the roof. You can't read that. Shh, don't tell Dad. <laughs> Stewie's house was the house to be at. Watching Craig grow up, there was no doubt that music was Craig's true language of love. In my mind, I think of the Abba song, Thank You for the Music, as Craig has given us all so much music to be grateful for. As a boy, he would sit at the organ stool beside me and with his tiny hands added a many a colourful note to the tune I was playing. From age four, he began piano lessons and it was evident he had an innate gift. From here, his love of music grew as he did. Carols on the Corner in our street was... Uh, the Christmases event, Christmas event to attend, featuring the family and especially Craig, performing and singing. He was a member of Toowoomba Choral Society Junior Choir, where he played numerous roles to shows, uh, in shows like Oliver, Annie and The King and I. When just nine, Craig was cast as Kurt Von Trapp in The Sound of Music, a, a role he really uh, relished, and beside his little sister Elizabeth, who played Gretel. Throughout his high school years, he was part of every band possible and played musical roles in school musicals. Later, he performed in Showboat and Maine. Playing Curly in Oklahoma was a performance of a lifetime. The all singing, all dancing, romantic cowboy. How he loved this performing and this talent ran deep. He was also part of the Helen Early Music Ensemble, creating his singing ability. It seemed as if um, Craig could play every instrument invented. He loved the challenge of learning a new one, and it really was at our house. Guess the instrument he was bringing home from school this week. Clarinet, trumpet, saxophone, guitar, percussion, and more. He won many awards in the Toowoomba of Stedford. There was always a tune in his mind, earning him another nickname, Maestro. Craig, a young adult now, navigating the workforce, and further study felt called to change direction. Following his heart, he stepped into ministry, a doctor of hearts, Pastor Craig. Craig's ministry was broad, starting as a young creative pastor and youth leader, using his musical talent in leading teams at New Hope Church, writing songs, recording, and leading congregations in praise, and worship, where his focus was to invite all to know the love of the Saviour. He was thrilled when his youngest sibling, Timothy, joined him on staff in the media department, ready to inspire the world together. Craig's skill in the art of preaching and teaching Bible college started to emerge at this time, but it was really it really was always his passion for inspiring each and every person to experience the presence of God that stood, cut, uh, sorry, stood out no matter what he was doing. Christmas has always been a very important to my family and Craig was Santa each year, a familiar family tra uh, tradition, handing out the presents with a goofy voice and a dramatic flair. Gifts of socks and undies had to be modelled on the spot. Um, 
Craig contemplated how he could tell the story of Christmas in a different and contemporary way over these years. A fairy tale Christmas was born. Such a clever and popular production throughout the region. Craig used the characters of the three little pigs and um, Goldilocks and the three bears and to tell the story of the birth of Jesus. It really was a fantastic time. His team of family and friends transformed the stage at the Empire Theatre into a magical Christmas wonderland. And this was just the beginning. Craig was the creative director of the Toowoomba Carols in the Park with a heart to share the true meaning of Christmas in all the festive fun. After he took over that role, crowds grew from 8,000 to well around 15,000 in a couple of years. And more delighted in the evenings of community and cheer with Chris, Elizabeth and Tim by his side and team of many others who shared the vision. It has always taken me back to humble beginnings in our family front yard with carols on the corner. I was thrilled when he asked me to play Santa Claus for fairy tale Christmas and then for the city of Toowoomba, a role I will always cherish. How Santa would enter was a surprise even to me because Craig seemed to have the habit of wanting to blow me up <laughs> in things. And I do remember the last one was a big parcel from Australia Post on the back of a truck and it blew to pieces, I can tell you, when I was inside. <laughs> As a family together, we faced many challenges across the years. With the passing of Deborah, Craig was a steadfast support for me and his siblings. As my oldest son, I am proud of the way he helped me navigate the way forward for our family. He has always played an instrumental role in the lives of his siblings and they faced, as they faced at times their own life's challenges. Championing their, so championing them and guiding them through with wisdom beyond his years. He is brother-in-law to my son's wives, Emma and Shaya, welcoming them proudly to our fold, groomsmen to his brothers. He is uncle to all his nieces and nephews. He is awesome Uncle Craig to his many nephews and nieces, even giving each their own nickname. A fun, special connection with them all. Hey, Alabella, boom. <laughs> However, today, all of these words spoken I really have no words to truly express my love for my son, and I know Deborah would feel the same. Craig, I watched and cheered you on in awe of the talent and giftings you possessed. The way you had with people, you have touched the lives of so many right from your earliest years. To Julie, my beautiful daughter-in-law, Nada, Nadia, Riley, Jordan and Addison. You are precious to our family and we are here for all of you at this sad time. Craig, here today with Elizabeth, Christopher and Timothy, we honour you and we celebrate you. Well done, O oh good and faithful servant. We promise to continue on with your love of great food, coffee and peanut M&Ms. <laughs> Craig, <laughs> Craig, I am so pleased that God gave you to be my son. You have been my rock and I will so greatly miss you, mate.
Thank you, Ken. As we've reflected on the second part, the second and third part of Craig's life, we realise how wonderful uh, the family dynamic of what the Stuarts had and how those wonderful qualities Craig has taken on into the other areas of his life and those areas have expanded and increased his influence. So those themes that we've already heard from Ken will be echoed here and it's just a reminder to us what a, what a wonderful impact he's been. But first, Craig fell in love at the ripe age of 22. A handsome young Craig and his mate Shane were returning a thrifty rental truck but not before they tested the suspension over the speed bumps at the university car park. <laughs> the young larrikins then ventured to Maccas, running into two lovely young ladies. Shane was already getting to know one of them, but this was the first time Craig had laid eyes on Julie. The boys were housemates and they had joked about marrying sisters. But it wasn't until a couple of years later that Craig and Julie really hit it off at the Australian Gospel Music Festival. As part of their 18 months of dating, Craig requested that Julie watch every episode of Star Wars before he, could, she, he would consider her becoming Mrs. Stewart. <laughs> Julie is part of a large family, one brother and four sisters, all having wedding proposal stories. Craig was aiming to be number four son-in-law to have the proposal chat with Gary. He decided to ask while working alongside Gary. But at the end of the day, Gary had got a full day of labour and Craig had not asked. He returned the following day with more courage and Gary said yes. Craig and Julie were married on a beautiful wedding, at a beautiful wedding in November 2003. They honeymooned in Borneo, and over the almost 18 years of marriage, Craig left no stone unturned in showing his deep love for Julie. He would always go the extra mile to show her just how special she was to him by arranging surprise nights away and time together. Being married expanded his family as he also became part of the Armstrong family. Craig is a loved part of the Armstrong family and has been embraced by all of us. He will live on in our hearts and minds. We have appreciated especially the many times he helped organise a family event. The 14 nieces and nephews will never forget how much fun he was and will always stand beside their cousins to support them and keep his memory living on in our hearts forever. Ken has mentioned Craig's creativity, and we saw this flow into family life, with him doing up investment homes, interior design, renovations, cooking. Then in 2017, their first child, Nadia Grace, was born just before Craig turned 30 and in time for his first Father's Day. Their two boys, Riley and Jordan, were also born in Toowoomba in 2019 and no. 2009 and 2011. A few years later, Addison was born in Brisbane in 2014. Nadia's birth started a new season of family life for Craig alongside his amazing wife, Julie. He shared his love of Star Wars with his growing family through lightsaber fights in the backyard and many hours of Lego building. Craig also became an expert in children's cake decorating and design. Craig deeply loved and cared for his kids. Nadia, Riley, Jordan and Addison, your dad has shown and taught you so much. Follow his example. Look for the miracle and the blessing of God in every day. And you will live a wonderful, full life. Mm -hmm. Craig and Julie spent many years working and serving alongside one another in the church as leaders and in the creative ministry areas in this, with their small children along for the ride. 
Craig sowed his life into the local church, New Hope, and in the wider community in schools, festivals, sporting groups, and community events. During this season, Craig's life modelled what makes a difference is what you do after you've given your best. Craig had a gift to create beautiful masterpieces. From blank canvases, canvases or a blank page, or a, or a blank stage uh, set, as it were. He would look at an empty room and light up with all sorts of fabulous ideas on how to set the atmosphere just right so people would be engaged and welcomed, so their gaze would be set on the focal points in the room. It, was, it seemed effortless. Oh, and he would usually sit back and patiently wait until we all contributed our ideas and then quietly pipe up, have you thought about, and proceeded to humbly blow all our ideas out of the water. His ideas would be the best of simplicity and extravagance all rolled into one. Over the years, Craig went on many mission trips. Those included to Japan, the Philippines, and most recently to Israel as part of his study. Craig had a great influence on the lives of many people and has always been passionate about mentoring the next generation and believing in young people. Staying up late at night was very normal at Stewie's place. Dropping in at 10.30pm was not out of the question for his family and close friends. There was always time for a coffee or the peanut M&Ms or cracking open a packet of salt and vinegar chips, great chats, late night movies, maybe a late night run to Macca's or whipping up scones. The late nights were fun, but Craig had an incredible ability to sleep in for ages. <laughs> While the rest of us got up and went to work, he'd sleep in until the very last minute, then race out the door, laptop on shoulder, guitar and coffee in hand. A loyal and long-term friend to many who had the honour of walking beside him, these are some of some some fond memories from brothers and friends. Replaying funny lines in movies over and over until we were rolling on the floor laughing uncontrollably. Hours of playing PlayStation and Xbox, but that was before the kids came along. Craig loved Christmas, gift giving. He would spend hours searching the shops for just the right gift. He was not afraid of taking on a challenge. He was always generous with his time, money, resources, ready to give to those around him in wisdom and truth. Craig was a loyal friend, mm. one of the best kind of friend. You can always count on him to be there for you when you needed a friendly word of encouragement or even if you needed a big reality check. 2013 marked a significant turning point in Craig and Julie's life. With three small kids in hand and a heart to serve and love others, they were very excited to explore the new season. They moved to Sandgate and began pastoring Bayside Church. Craig loved Brisbane life, exploring cafes and scouring endless shops for just the right piece of men's clothing. He went out, he would, dr he would drive out of his way to collect the right beans for home to satisfy his love of coffee. While pastoring Bayside Church, Craig embraced a stretching role, learning how to minister to a diverse range of people while discovering how to include his young family in the ministry. Craig enjoyed engaging with the local community in the Brisbane Northside region. He spent many hours volunteering his time and creative genius on projects such as the Home Pumpkin Festival at Sandgate, a local chaplaincy committee, Queensland Australian Christian women's events. Craig also was an instrumental part in initiating combined nights of prayer and worship between local community churches. Craig had a wonderful ability to see something, not for what it, what it is, but for what it could be. Craig experienced a tough time finishing up at Bayside Church. However, this change expanded opportunities for his family and ministry. One significant family time was the 2018 road trip adventure 
to fulfil a lifelong dream of taking his family to the Carol in Domain. Then he moved into a new role in church consultancy, which built upon all his past foundations. Craig partnered with Recalibrate Church, Redcliffe, which is now known as Emerge, Connect Baptist Church, Kingdom Makers and Cornerstone Church, where he continued to share his love and passion for worship and creative solutions. Craig's time in Brisbane saw many rich and authentic relationships Mm. formed as he journeyed life with many of us. I'm sure you'd agree. During this time, Craig was led by God to re-engage in study through Alpha Crucis College and began pursuing an academic pathway in theology, studying a Master's of Arts in Christian Studies, this time studying with Julie by his side. Before we knew it, friends and family were spending hours caught up in the retelling of Craig's experiences in Israel at the end of 2019. We all continue to hear stories from people who shared this journey with him and we realised that this was a significant time enlarging his ongoing experience of God. During COVID, Julie remained working and Mr. Stubbly Boss, did I say that right? He moved in. (laughs) Craig stepped into a greater capacity at home, broadening his home leadership, cheering Julie on and supporting the kids through the season as their homeschooling teacher. One of the things Craig's kids said to us when we were talking about him was that he didn't like when people were treated unfairly. Or seeing people go through tough times. We're all here today because he is, commi- he is committed to bringing hope to our lives. Craig began exploring his thesis topic. Now get ready for this. <laughs> How might, it's titled, How Might Modern Worship Practice Be Re-Envisioned Through the Rediscovery of the Eternal Priesthood of Christ as a Renewed Invitation into Trinitarian, Trinitarian Relationship? <laughs> Jordan, I think you're taking that on, aren't you? Yeah. It's a big title, but as we reflect on it, it it's really become apparent that was a culmination of his life's work and his passion for worship, for engaging people, and an invitation to Christ. In the last few months of his life, he began his dream job as a lecturer of ministries at City Point Ministry College. However, we are sure, like Ken said, God has said to Craig, well done, good and faithful servant, come home. Craig was full of life, looking for the miracle and the blessing of God in every day. His hope and prayer is that you find a place of grace, compassion, and allow God to find you and pull you into his love. Trust God and him alone. Firstly, I'd just like to say how appreciative that I am to see you all here today and for those online. It just really overwhelms my heart to see all the support and care that we've felt in this short journey that we've had to face in the tough times. Um, And we really appreciate you being here today. This isn't really what we thought the journey was going to quite look like. This wasn't quite our plan. And we knew Craig was a fighter and we thought he'd still be here today.
and he is in all of us, I think. Little bits that he's sown into our life over the past 43 years, whatever that may have looked like. He wasn't afraid of dying because he knew where he was going. The only fear he had of was leaving us all behind at this point in time. but he still lives on within us. Craig was still designing and creating until the very end. Something that Jace just referenced was, and from the kids, of how he didn't like to see people being treated unfairly or going through tough times. And while we were in the hospital, through his diagnosis time, Craig really got a glimpse of the, some of the tough realities that other people were facing as well. And we, we started in that little journey of our time in the hospital rooms declaring what today might be, what's it going to look like, what are they going to come in and share with us today. And we were sitting there one day and he was wearing his nice bottle green Nike shirt and we're like, right, today is just do it day. We're going to say whatever they have got to tell us, it's okay, we'll just do it because we know God's in control. And as the days went on, we declared something over each day. And that really birthed something in Craig's heart to be able to help others who were going through tough things as well. And that's formed the creative idea of launching a clothing line called Therap Therapositive Apparel, um, helping people who are going through tough times declare their own way. And Craig was having amazing creative ideas and he was waking up so early during this season and he'd just jump up and he'd get on his computer and graphically design um, these, these sayings and thoughts and as on display over here today we actually have some of them that were to be the prototypes that he sent off to the um, printers and in part of that he got each one of his children their own shirt to say we've got this I'm stronger than I look. And I'm just so amazed that that was already in play. Our beautiful children have that to hold on to and hope to. That their, their dad is, you've got this because we know God's got us. And we're committed to continuing that legacy that he's put in place for us. And yeah, they're all on display over there. Um, and I just am so thankful for every moment that we had to share with him. Um, each of our children would like to share something, a little story about their dad and reflection and a little tribute to him. If you bear with us a moment. One of the things I really liked about Dad was that he always loved Star Wars and he really liked having chats about it with me. One of my favourite memories was watching my first Star Wars movie with him. Another thing he helped me with was giving me creative ideas for my Lego project and every time I built something new, he would tell me he loved it. Dad was very passionate about music and taught me the love of music too. Dad always encouraged me to practice my trumpet at least three times a week. <laughs> Going on runs with Dad was always fun. Every time we went, we'd try to go a little bit further. One time I ran five kilometres after having lots of chocolate and vomited afterwards. <laughs> Dad told me to stop eating so much sugar. <laughs> I think Dad was an amazing person and I'll miss him a lot. I thank him for all he has given me, a great life, an amazing family, and a great relationship with God. I know with all that he has taught me, he is in an amazing place with streets of gold and where there is no S-U-N, just the S-O-N. And I promise him, and I promise him that I continue to be a child of God. Thanks for listening.
There are so many memories and fun times I could talk about in great detail. However, we don't have forever today. This change in our lives has shown me how much my dad meant to me and how much of an impact he has had on my life and on others. Throughout the years, dad has always been there for me and has supported me. Dad always helped me with my assignments when I needed it. And thanks to dad, I even got an A for my social science project last year. Whatever I did, he always encouraged me, telling me to try my best to push myself to my limits and keep trying until I succeeded. He was always willing to do whatever he could to be at special events for us. For example, during my graduation from primary school, he was on a trip visiting Israel. He FaceTimed me at two o'clock in the morning Israel time just so he could see me. I've had many good times with him, playing games, playing and listening to music and just being silly. His dad jokes were always a hit. <laughs> One of the things I liked doing with him was watching TV while giving him a foot rub. To be honest, one of the reasons I did it was just to stay up late and watch TV. <laughs> and being with him was special too. Overall, he was not just a great dad to me, but, but also a good friend to others, as he always encouraged, supported, and helped them and that is what I hope to do as well. We will miss him. However, we have many great memories to remember him by. We love you, Dad. Something I loved about Dad was watching cricket and V8 this past weekend. I liked giving Dad foot rubs so I could stay up late at night. His dad jokes were really funny, and we understood them. This is an example. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. What do you call a deer with no legs and no eyes? Still no idea. When dad was being silly and something was not fair, he would always say, what a stitch up. Dad was a great man, and he has always been the best dad to us. We will all miss him lots, but like my shirt says, I'm stronger than I look, and we'll all get through this together. Thank you for listening to my favourite stories of Dad. about dad was getting on his knees and him flipping me around. One of my favorite things was joking with dad around the house, being silly and laughing lots. He made funny faces and made noises like Chewie and Yoda from Star Wars. Dad always gave me cool crafty ideas when I asked. I liked when Dad would play games like Color Brain and Lego with me. Dad would buy me cool toys for my birthday and make awesome cakes. Dad took us on a big trip and we had fun at Crested Canyon Canberra together. Daddy would always say to us, we got this. He was the best dad I had. I just want to say thank you, Craig, for the wisdom and sharing of your life with me and others. Thank you for helping me be strong and put my big girl knickers on when I needed to, <laughs> when I had to do something that I clearly didn't want to do. Thanks for giving yourself to me. Thanks for our beautiful children. I'll really cherish every moment. I won't forget a moment that I've spent of my life with you, of your overflowing love. He really did spoil me.
We had so much love beyond words. He would often say, I love you to the stars and back. And he'd often find it strange for a man who had so many words how he became speechless with me. Thanks for sharing your life with me. And I realize more now than ever how immersed and immeasurably blessed I am to have had you. And I'm so grateful that God poured out his richest blessings and had me here. You will always be my treasure, my never-ending blessing of God's love in my life. And I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful for all the dreams that we shared or the desires to see more in people's lives than our own. For helping me through the struggle and helping each other through the tough times. Our life motto was to look for the miracles in everything. And in the last days, as quick as they were and as tough situation we found ourselves in. There were still so many little miracles. I know that I can stand up here and talk today because of the strength that he's taught me and the strength of God as well. I'm so in love with you, Kitty today more than ever before. There are no words, just great gratefulness and deepest love. I'm forever grateful and forever overwhelmed by your love for us and our children. We love you. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you for the life of Craig. We want to thank you, Lord, for all of the rich memories that you have allowed us to share in with him. We thank you, Lord, for the rich memories that you've allowed us to hear today from his past and from when we knew him. And God, ultimately, we just want to give glory to you for his life. We want to acknowledge, Lord, that you are the giver of life. And Father God, we are blessed to have been in Craig's relationship orbit. God, we want to honour you this morning and thank you for all you are, for the courage you give us and for the blessing, Lord, of journeying with one of your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, today we're just going to have a bit of a photo tribute, and I would just encourage you, just in this photo tribute, just um, just reflect on your memories of Craig and just let the Lord speak to you through this time. Trying to hold my breath, let it stay this way. Can't let this moment end. We set off a dream, getting. with me Cause darling without you All the shine the thousand spotlights All stars we steal from the night sky will never be enough Never be enough Tell us though we're still too little These hands could hold
just want to spend a little time with you just preaching from a passage that was highlighted on Craig's phone. Julie showed me this last Friday night, things that he'd been highlighting in his last weeks. And it was the passage that Jerry read out in, in, uh, in uh, Psalm 91. And there were the verses from 13 through to 16 at the end. And I just want to share a little bit around that and just what it means to be, um, what these meant to Craig. Um, Verse 13, it says, You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Craig knew what it was to have danger in his life. He knew what it was to be fighting against something. And he was fighting against this illness. I remember the Friday before he was diagnosed, he and I had coffee together at our favourite haunt, which was Matthew Thomas up at Sandgate. And he was sitting uncomfortably. And I said, are you okay? And he said, I'm just worried about this lump under my arm. And uh, the doctor doesn't think, seem to think it's anything, but I don't think that. I think it's more serious. And so we talked about getting a second opinion. He was down to lead worship at our church that coming Sunday. He came Sunday. I said, are you all right? Is it better? He said, no, it's worse. I said, would you like somebody else to play guitar to help you? And in typical Craig fashion, it was, no, Dave, she'll be right. I'll be right. right. I've got it. Um, And and he did. Actually, actually his words to to me were, no, Rev, I'll be right. Because that's what he calls me. In our denomination, where when we're ordained, we're called reverends. And Craig took great joy in taking the mickey out of me (laughs) by calling me Rev. And he said, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. And then the Monday... I got a phone call when he'd had the brain scan. And I went up and saw him on the, um, I think it was the Thursday or the Friday that week, and I rang him, and he says to me, now, Rev, make sure you bring some of that Baptocostal oil up with you to anoint me and pray over me. I said, okay, that's what I'll do. So I did, went up, prayed with him, and even then, what you see on these shirts We've got this. He said, oh, he said, oh, he said we've got it. We've got it, Rev. It, God's, God's going to sort this out. I feel covered and I feel blessed. I know heaps of people are praying for me. Those were his words. So even in the presence of great danger, he's rejoicing. This only comes from one place, folks. It doesn't come from anywhere else. It only comes from a knowledge of the Father. It only comes from confidence that is instilled in us through the promises of God in our lives. Verse 14 says, Because he loves me, the Lord says, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. That's pretty hard to say now, but it's true. In this life and in the next, the Lord protects us. In this life and the next, he goes before us. He knows the number of days we had. Julie shared that it's not her choice. It's not my choice either. In fact, I remember going home in my journal and just saying to the Lord, can you please give Craig back to his family? I wasn't worried whether it was in God's will or not. I was just, Lord, that's just what I want. But it wasn't to be. But we know that in this life and the next, God has it covered. Craig was a musician. He was more than a musician or a leader or an educator or a lecturer. Before all of that, Craig was a follower of Jesus. He followed him because he believed in the truth. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, For those who have believed... That is, those who put their trust in the Father, they have the right to be called children of God. If you know the Father, you are a child of the King. If you don't know Him, believing, putting your trust in Him, means that you become a child of the King. And that's where Craig's confidence was. That's where all of this came from. And he believed that God called him child. God intimately knew him as a father knows a son, as a son knows a father. That even in physical death, our life continues. The scriptures talk about the fact that for those who believe, God gives eternal life. We transition 
from this body to a new one because that is God's plan. Craig has his new body. Craig is with those who have gone before him. But those of you that know the Lord, when you pass from this life to the next, you will go and meet with him. You will see him again. And I have some questions to ask him. And he says, whenever you call on me, I will answer him. Whenever you are in trouble, I will deliver him and I will honor him. Craig knew what it was like to call on the Lord. In fact, I I, I used to say to Craig, mate, you are one of these rare leaders that knows how to minister across denominations. Not every leader can do that. Not every leader can do that. And he he would come to us at Connect a Baptist church, and he would say, I reckon this song will work for you guys. Or I reckon that song will work for you guys. Or he would go into another context and say, I think that song will work, or this song will work. Because for Craig, it was more than just a form. He wasn't just interested in a form. He was interested in letting people know that they could enter into the presence of God and meet with him, and form didn't matter. That's what he did. And so I, I, I remember he would come, I, I would, we would run um, these small um, discipleship and mission conferences at our church, just with about half a dozen, eight churches and their teams, and I would get Craig and Julie to come and do worship for us, and um, we, we, do, we, we were practicing things, we were looking at things like life shapes and discipleship shapes, and, and Craig could minister in a room there where there was Pentecostal, Baptist, Uniting, and Anglican. And all of them would say, who is this guy? In fact, I had the guy who was, used to be the worship pastor at Crossway down in Melbourne, the largest Baptist church in Australia, say to me, who is this guy? And he's better than anybody we got. And he wasn't just talking musically, he was talking relationally. He was talking, just being able to connect with people and bring people into the presence of God. And that's what, that's what, that's just what he did. And and he would, whenever we would talk about deep philosophical things or deep theological things, he would say to me, do you have a shape for that, Rev? Because he would just like to stir me up. We would come to our that's where I first met Craig, was at a, a prayer meeting of pastors in the Sandgate area. And we used to meet in my office in, in, in our, at our church. And um, after a while, he got to know me. And he would always try and drop the word smoke machine into every conversation. Because <laughs> he knew he would get me. <laughs> That's just what he did. And so... so he was able just to minister across these contexts. And, and the reason was, was because Craig, he put his relationship with the Lord first before everything else that he was. And folks, for us, that's how we need to remember him. A lot of you are blessed by how he served or being a colleague or a friend. But, but we, we need to remember him first and foremost that he was a child of the king. And that's who he was. Verse 16 of this Psalm 91, it says, With long life I will satisfy him to show him and show him my salvation. Craig lived this on this earth for 43 years, but he is still alive with the king. Salvation guarantees that. Ephesians 1.13 says that it is the Holy Spirit who is the promised seal of salvation for all who believe. This is why we know that we go to be with the Father when we pass from this life to the next. As I said to you before, I first met Craig when he came to Sandgate and led the ACC church in Sandgate. And he would do crazy things and um, try to stir me, but that was just part of his way. When Craig went through some burnout, I remember saying to him, we'll just meet every Tuesday for coffee and just start talking. And we did. 
And I got to learn where all of the good coffee shops were in Sandgate at that time. He would say to me, Rev, have you tried this place? I said, uh, no. He said, let's meet there. I said, well, just text me the address and I'll get there. Every time, there was always these new things that we would go to. In fact, I remember going to one where it was in the main street of Sandgate where all I gave you was stools and I'm sure it was strategic to move you on. And I said to him, your young butt might be handling this, but my old butt ain't. <laughs> I remember just walking with him in that. I remember I saw it. And, and, and the thing that I remember is just as he grew out of that, just the sensitivity to God that just exponentially grew because he was learning to trust in God in new ways. And he caught wind of what it would mean to be in this new season. I remember on my heart, I, I, I wanted to share with him that I really felt that maybe he should go back and go to Bible college and do a bit more study. And I was hesitant to say that to him, but I remember the, I remember the day I said that to him. He said, that's funny. Jules said that to me about a month ago. I said, well, listen to your wife, don't listen to me. And that's just started the journey of him going back to Bible college. I saw him as a father. I saw him as a husband, how gentle he was with his kids, just wanted the best for them. He impressed me. In fact, as a father, he left me for dead. Today, but, but our relationship grew that he called me one of his mentors, but I was really just happy to call him a friend. Today's a hard day, and... We've talked a lot about the hope that we have in Jesus, that Craig is with his father in heaven. This by no means takes away the fact that we need to mourn and grieve our loss. We are created in the image of the father, and part of that is grief and loss. We grieve the loss of a man who loved the Lord, who was important in our lives, a man that we will miss immensely, but most of all, a friend that we know who is secure in the love and in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Let's pray together. Father, we just want to thank you that we can remember Craig for who he is. We can remember him and bless you for him. We pray, Lord, that you would just give us what we need, Lord, to journey through these coming days. Father, would you give us the strength to be strong, but also to acknowledge that we are human as well and we mourn and grieve for the loss of our dear brother. Father, we want to thank you for this time today just to remember him and thank you that we could be here together. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, on your seat, you'll see that you have a card and a pen where you can write your reflections of Craig on it. This time of reflection is for the family. So the family and their cards, they will come out and place them on Craig's coffin. But I would encourage you, if you have something to write on your card, please do that and we will accept that on the way out. There will be receptacles where you can deposit that in on the way out. So I would encourage you to do that. But at this time, we will have a moment of farewell and reflection for the family.
like to invite Pastor James Hewitt up for the words of committal. Thank you, Pastor David. Hey, it was last Tuesday, I got a text from Ange, who said to us, uh, we better come to the hospital because Craig was obviously coming into the final hours of his life. And as we went into the hospital, I saw Julie there, and uh, Craig was there breathing. And, um, you know, we spoke about one of the greatest things we can talk about at a funeral service. We spoke about fruit. Because ultimately, you and I, we are known for our fruit, the fruit in which we produce here on earth. And these cards, as I've just witnessed down here, I don't know about you, but these cards haven't got written on them how much money Craig has got in his bank account. They haven't got written on them about the cars he drove. They haven't even got wrote on them the times when we tried to get him and Julie to move down to Melbourne uh, because he so loved coffee. And we literally also spent every hour when they were in Melbourne with us searching out the coffee hipster cafes. None of that is on those cards, but what is on the cards is fruit. The fruit that Craig has bought in his life. And you know, as we approach a committal in a Christian context, we have this great hope that this is not just it. It doesn't end here. And as we were in the hospital and we were holding hands and we were worshipping together, weren't we, Julie, and we were praying over Craig and we were, we're Pentecostal, so we were, you know, we were speaking in tongues, and we were shabba dabba ding donging over Craig, and, and uh, you know, we, we were believing for God's goodness. Do you know what? We just simply held each other's hands, and we looked into each other's eyes, and we said this. We said, we have the confidence. Because as we approach a committal in a Christian context, we have this great assurance and this great confidence. Paul tells a church in 2 Corinthians, he says this, he says, we are confident of one thing, that when we are absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. And you know, today we have very little confidence, Jules, of what lies ahead. We don't know what next week is going to look like. We don't know what next month, we don't even know what next year is going to look like for us and our memories and you as a family. But we do have a great confidence today that in a Christian context of a committal, that we are not praying for Craig to enter the presence of God. Because he is already there. He is no longer in this box. He is present with the Lord. And so Paul tells us this great truth in Corinthians. He says that when we have breathed our last breath, when we are absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. And we are present in a place which Jesus himself calls paradise. Isn't that a wonderful thought right now? Hey, we all know Craig for his fruit in worship. Craig was our worship pastor for several years in Redcliffe. Craig and Julie were, um, were well known for forgetting the lyrics to Oh Holy Night at the carol service. They were the first people to ever not know the songs of Oh Holy Night. And Somebody had to shout out from halfway down the back of the room, it's called Oh Holy Night. And um, they finally got it. Craig loved worshipping. And the reality today in what is a sad day for us, the reality in what Julie will be one of the hardest days of your life, the reality is we have this confidence. And we don't have confidence in what something that man has said. We don't have a confidence in what is a good idea. We have a confidence in what God has spoken out in his written word that in times like this, we can truly rely and lean into. We have a confidence today, Jules, that Craig is doing the thing he loved most. He is worshipping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in the place Jesus himself calls paradise. So we're not going to commit his body to the Lord. We're not even going to commit his spirit to the Lord. Because how can you commit something to God that is already in his presence? You only commit something that's not there. But we have the confidence 
that when Craig breathed his last in that very sad moment, that instantly he came into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and into the presence of peace. But what we are going to do today is we are going to thank Jesus. And we are going to thank Jesus for the fruit of Craig's ministry. Because the fruit of Craig's ministry lives on today in Julie's life. It lives on in the kids' lives. And it lives on in the very strong genes that are in the Stuart household. Am I right? Do you know, Julie, as you were just worshipping back there and uh, saw you worshipping, and didn't she do so well? Did just so well. Do you know the fruit of Craig was speaking right there? The fruit of a worshipper was coming together and was coming out of who you are. And you said these wonderful lines. You said, fix your eyes upon Jesus. And as we just come right now to finish and and just hear these words of a committal, and we thank the Lord for Craig Stewart, do you know, we come to just realize and understand that Craig's legacy, his influence, and his fruit will continue on in many of our lives and many of our ministries and many of our friendship circles and conversations as we focus upon what the main thing about Craig's life was, and that was Jesus. Do you know, when we were around his hospital bed, we spoke these wonderful verses from Colossians. And in Colossians, it tells us all about Jesus. It tells us that he is the head of the church. It tells us that he is God in flesh. It tells us that because uh, he is God in flesh, we can put all of our hope in him. We can turn our eyes, Jules, towards Jesus, and we can look directly into his face. And the things of earth, though they are very heavy upon us, though they are lowly and though they are in this season of sadness, we fix our eyes on the great hope that Craig today is in a place called paradise, and he's worshipping the Lord Jesus, and we will all be reunited with him one day. Would you bow your heads with me today? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for the life of Craig Stewart. We thank you for his legacy. We thank you for his fruit. We thank you that he has fought the good fight. We thank you he has run the race. And we thank you that he has accomplished that which you have set out him to do. We thank you, Father, for the fruit in which he has left on earth. We thank you for his children. We thank you for Julie. We thank you for his parents. We thank you for his family. And Lord, right now, we just commit, Father, our own lives into your hands. We thank you that Craig is already in your presence. And one day we look forward to this great hope of being reunited with him and celebrating with him for your glorious and your, your, your goodness in our lives. We thank you for these words, immortal words Jesus said when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me, though he may die, will live forever. Amen. Can I just thank you all for coming today to celebrate and remember Craig's life. I would also like to remind you that as we leave today, there will be refreshments in the foyer and the family would love if you could just stay around for some of those and mingle and and chat Um, Can I also encourage you with those notes that you've written, please um, put those in the receptacles as you go out. Uh, The family would love uh, to be able to read those and uh, and just uh, join us uh, together uh, in the the foyer as we finish. Could I ask the pallbearers to come forward, please?
Why'd you have to leave so soon? Yeah. Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you without feeling much worse. I know you're in a better place, but it's always gonna hurt. Carry on. How do I breathe without you? Feeling so cold. I'll be waiting right here for you till the day you're home. Carry on. Give me all the strength I need to carry on. So let the It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come along.